Hello everyone, hope you're having a great day today. Welcome to the Film and Sight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss some more Black Jackets contestants and how they're doing now. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content, guys! Jimmy Casey James Casey, also nicknamed Jimmy, made his debut on the very first season of Hell's Kitchen. Compared to the other contestants, he was quite reserved, often being extremely quiet in the kitchen. Really, the only times he would ever speak up were when the contestants tried to continuously provoke him. Other than this little flaw, Casey would easily get along with those around him thanks to his humor and friendly demeanor. Although even if he might have been an exceptional worker, he consistently performed terribly in and out of the kitchen. Walking on thin ice the entire season, Casey managed to swerve from elimination right up until the Black Jackets portion of the competition. Once a contestant gets to this tough phase of Hell's Kitchen, they truly need to be on their A-game or risk being eliminated. This is sadly what happened to Casey, whose inconsistency was not welcome, leading to his elimination. Ranking 5th place, he did receive a comment from Gordon Ramsay, but it wasn't the most complimentary. He said that each and every one of these contestants now have to start emerging as individual talent. This is where we really start to find out who can handle the heat and who can't. Clearly, tonight, Jimmy couldn't. Casey did return for episode 10 and 11, being Michael's second pick, who would later win the competition as a whole. Following his loss, he did express that the experience taught him a lot about cooking and how restaurants operate, which was very valuable to him. However, he returned to his job as a manager at the Institute of Culinary Education's purchasing department. At least he's doing well. Garrett Tell Season 2 contestant Garrett Tell was a strong link to the blue team and managed to fight his way to the Black Jackets phase. Tell's defining trait in the beginning anyway was the fact that he was a genuinely nice guy to work with. Always seeming to be in a good mood, you'd often catch him blissfully whistling or humming a melody during the dinner services. Due to his uplifting character, he developed a friendship with a contestant named Keith Green, who was also very humorous. Though, things took a complete 180 as the competition progressed, which was pretty surprising to see. Once Heather West joined the blue team, Tell's likable personality went into the trash and he almost turned into a different person. He would get livid over the smallest things and while it was certainly entertaining, it seemed very out of place. Like how he flipped off both Gordon Ramsay and the red team while they were in a limousine after losing a challenge. On top of this, Tell was incapable of bouncing back from his mistakes, which is what led to his eventual elimination. Before heading out, the chef was named the best of the worst, which is such a backhanded compliment, and received a comment from Ramsay. Ramsay said that, I'm trying to find someone that deserves a restaurant. Each and every step of the way, Garrett fought me and his team, that's why he's no longer here. Returning for the 10th episode, Tell was comically Heather's last pick, but he did redeem himself by not making any mistakes during the service. Following his run in the competition, he didn't have the most eventful career, but did some pretty interesting stuff. Namely, he worked on a few short films like Pandora's Prism, Run Home Jack, and M is for Manhood, as well as continued to improve his cooking. Unfortunately, Tell was arrested 4 times between 2012 and 2016 for driving without a license and spent some time in jail. You can check out his YouTube channel simply called Garrett Tell, where he posts a bunch of random gaming videos, though he hasn't posted in 2 years so we wouldn't be surprised if he's in jail. Josh Waller Appearing in the third season of Hell's Kitchen, contestant Josh Waller was an incredibly passionate cook. Considered to be a very friendly addition to the team, Waller was always one to crack jokes and lighten the mood. Even though he might have had a strong love for cooking, it was outweighed by his terrible performances. Consistently doing poorly, his only reason for not being eliminated early on was because his teammates were doing much worse. Surprisingly, making it to the Black Jackets portion of the competition, this is where Waller met his end. During his final service, he was outperformed by the other finalists and was finally eliminated ranking 5th place. But here's the catch. Rather than be eliminated after the service was complete, he was booted mid-round for making tons of mistakes, which was a first back then. Due to this hilarious fact, Waller is widely considered as one of the worst Black Jacket contestants in the show's history. Regardless of his shortcomings, he did get along with virtually everyone, with the exception of Rock Harper, who was rude to him for no apparent reason. Returning later on for episode 10 and 11, he somehow ended up on Rock's team and yet again did terribly burning food and cooking things that weren't ordered. Anyway, we think you'll be pretty surprised with how well Waller's doing following his run on Hell's Kitchen. For a while, he worked as the executive chef at a restaurant called The Blue, before moving on to 5300 Chop House and then the Kung Fu Kitchen and Sushi. Back in 2016, he decided to co-found a catering delivery service for kids called Born Food, which ended up closing down 4 months later. Today, he works as the chef de cuisine of Filia by Michael Schwartz at SLS Brickle, which serves fantastic Italian cuisine. We're glad he's doing well. Matt Sigil Ranking 6th place in the 4th season of the show, Matt Sigil is regarded as one of the most hated and polarizing contestants in Hell's Kitchen history. Admittedly, there were moments where he could be genuinely kind, like how he would do his best to cheer his team up when they were down. 
Conversely, Sigil would also be very childish to the point that he was described by a contestant named Corey Erling to be a 5 year old in a 35 year old's body. Not gonna lie, that comment was pretty hilarious, especially if you consider the things that he's done and how spot on it is. Most of the time, Sigil would have a temper tantrum when things didn't go his way, making himself seem like a bratty toddler. Pair this with his weird cooking ideas and his tender pride, and you get a 35 year old man child who's hard to work with. Without fail, if he was at risk of being eliminated, he would expose the blue team's weaknesses and throw people under the bus for his own benefit. During the Black Jackets phase, Sigil performed terribly, making tons of mistakes, but blamed it all on the fact that he had a migraine. Do you really think that's a good excuse? Well, we don't. Regardless of the fact that he was very passionate, his cooking was beyond inconsistent. Sigil is certainly capable of performing strongly, but often he'll suffer from a station meltdown during the dinner services and just ruin everything. With all this in mind, he was strongly disliked and even hated by all the contestants, quite literally getting along with no one. Conflict is quite expected, but Sigil had feuds with Corey, Christina, and Ben, who all couldn't stand his personality. Before leaving the competition, he did receive a beautiful comment from Ramsey, which never fails to crack me up. He said that there once was a boy named Matt whose kitchen performances fell flat, he was far from neat, miserable on meat, so I kicked him out, and that's that. Coming back in the 14th and 15th episode, he yet again performed poorly but managed to bounce back near the end, leading Christina to victory. To this day, Sigil is widely known as the worst Black Jacket contestant in the show's history, and for good reason. Although he's definitely doing well for himself post Hell's Kitchen, becoming the executive chef of Pizzicato in New Jersey. Additionally, he's gone on to do a collection of cooking demonstrations over the years at local cookery events. But now, after changing his surname, he goes by the name Ben Block. Giovanni Filippone Two-time contestant Giovanni Filippone was a talented chef that appeared in both the 5th and 17th season. Being a kind-hearted and experienced cook, Filippone had no issue getting along with most of the people he competed with. During his debut in the 5th season, he was always so nice to everyone around him, often encouraging chefs when they made mistakes. He would even brush off Lacey D'Angelo's pettiness and push her to work harder rather than complain. Being very consistent in the kitchen, Filippone was known to work very well with meat. All these reasons are why he got so far into the competition. Though once he got to the Black Jackets phase, he had a complete meltdown going off on Ramsey, which is what led to his elimination. Thankfully, he did redeem himself in the end by apologizing to the famous chef for his attitude, which is the mature thing to do. Ignoring this fact, he befriended almost everyone he worked with, unlike Matt Sigil, and was the only one to get along with Carol Scott. Coming back for the All-Star season, he was still the same person and was even doing exceptionally well in the beginning. However, as the competition pushed on, he quickly became inconsistent and was inevitably eliminated ranking 12th place. Following his first appearance on the show, he went on to work at the Tuscany Italian Bistro and got married having two children. The second time around, he went to work at The View on 30A until he eventually became the executive chef at Mama Clemenza's. How nice! Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one guys!